All right, well, you know, uh, in New York City in the 1990s, you know, uh, we, we all came together. You know, there was unfortunate uh, experiences with Buck Four and Kuriaki in the night, late 1980s. They got, you know, they had some problems in the street and they passed away. And a lot of us came back together around 90 to, to you know, to, to grieve and, and remember them and pay homage to them. And, you know, some of us hadn't seen each other in a couple of years, so we started getting dancing together, all of us again. And, you know, Rocksteady, we started, you know, building, building back you know, a little, you know, kind of like whoever was around and showing up and breaking. And I started practicing harder. You know, I kind of like, I always broke, but in the 80s, everybody got into problems and, you know, people weren't going to practices and it was, the, the trend kind of changed. So it kind of slowed down. It didn't stop, you know, because breaking is, is a something from your soul. Breaking is something that, it's tradition. It's like if, if I go to your birthday party and it's no matter what year it is, and I'm with you, we grew up together, and Just Become comes on, everybody knows what's gonna happen. Everybody's gonna go, yo, where's Kenny, where's Kenny? Everybody's gonna go, where's Jan? Everybody's gonna know that we're gonna break because that's what we do in our, na in our, na it's in our nature. So I, I wasn't practicing that much, you know, I was trying to survive like everybody in the late 80s, and when that happened, we started dancing together. And in the 90s, Rocksteady Crew kept on going, but they, uh, there became more chapters of Rocksteady Crew around the world, and. And I kind of felt like, you know, as vice president, I felt like I, I felt like I needed to start something, you know, and, and I was getting into battling really like me and Flowmaster, you know, Honey Rock, well, we were really just like leaning in a direction of battling. We were just like, and now this is breaking, of course. Now, Mr. Wiggles was, was you know, we were all traveling together. And I, I, I told Legs, I said, yo, I want to start my own chapter of Rock Steady Crew, or Seven Gems, you know what I'm saying? The Manhattan chapter. I remember sitting down with him in Lincoln Center during rehearsals, you know, I think Honey Rock was there and I said it, you know, and, we, and it was just not a big deal. We just talked about it, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, that following week, I came out with shirts that said RSC, Seven Gems. And me and Flowmaster showed up at a few events with Wiggles and we just started battling. We just show up and battle. And the concept was battling uh, no matter what, win, lose, or draw. It didn't matter if we lost or won. It's just we just want to keep battling. And the concept behind uh, Seven Gems started with the aspect of calling ourselves the Seven Grand Masters. Now, the Seven Grand Masters is an original Kung Fu film by Golden, Har Golden Harvest Films from, the 19 from 1977. Uh, 77 to 78, a movie called The Seven Grand Masters came out. I saw this movie on 42nd Street with all my friends when we were little. And I always loved that name, The Seven Grand Masters. And in the movie, there's, you know, this guy is going all over different parts, challenging people's styles in the movie. So I was like, yeah, that's kind of like what we're doing. You know, we're, we're challenging people, we're battling. And, uh, you know, so that was when I was like, yo, that's the name of the group, Seven Grand Masters. But then I was like, yo, it's kind of long to say that Seven Grand Masters is three words, you know. And I said, well, what if I make it like acronym, Seven GMS, you know, to make it shorter. I was like, that sounds cool. But then I was like, wait a minute, that sounds like gems. And I was like, also like, as an old school guy, you know, me, Wiggles, a lot of us, we put so much work into it that we had a lot of knowledge that young people didn't have. So we had gems of knowledge. When I say gems, in hip hop culture at the time, the surface was becoming polluted with commercialism, you know, different negative connotations, gangster rap. There was so much things on the surface of hip hop. And what we had was deeper than that. It was from the foundation. Like uh, when you dig deep, you're gonna find jewels, you're gonna find diamonds, you're gonna find precious stones and we had those precious stones of knowledge that are gems so I said that's perfect seven gems you know seven grandmasters seven gems so that was when it started out to where I said let's keep that on the shirt because then you could put it on the front and that was kind of like the beginning and it, it was a uh, it was a few of us uh, with jam on the groove when we were traveling and we, we you know we put shirts on and we just started expanding it and doing it from there uh, over the course of time there were problems in the group in the 90s and I, I kind of shut it down for a minute. I stopped it because there was some internal stuff that was kind of hard to deal with, you know, with a couple of people, including myself, and I made some mistakes and I was like, let me take it easy for a minute. But then in the, uh, you know, in the 2000s, man, I came back around, you know, I met up with Burn One and I was like, yo, you know, and then I got, I got friends that DJ, I got friends, you know, so I was like, yo, we're gonna do this shit like a movement, man. It's like, 
I'm not gonna go try to put motherfuckers down. I'm not gonna go, yo, you wanna be down? I was just like, yo, this is what we do. And people will come to me like, yo, King, man, I wanna roll with you guys, man. I'll be like, yo, what's up, alright, man, let's see what's good. I didn't go try to take people, oh, he's nice, yo, let me get him to the crew. I just let it go and people came to me. So I established uh, seven graph masters, seven grandmaster DJs, you know, seven gifted MCs, and then and the b-boys. So it's a, it's a hip hop movement, Seven Gems is a, is a it's an all-city hip-hop movement of a lot of uh, people, and there's people, worldwide representatives too, but it's very small, because it's very exclusive. I don't want to just go put everybody in their mother. You know, I, I, wanna, I want people that are interested in being a part of loyalty. So that's when I started uh, with the Seven Gems Rock Dance Division. I gave Burn One and Mr. Loose, you know, I made them executive directors of the Rock Dance Division, because I trusted their outlook and their, you know, direction with it. And we started the rock dance division and that became more of the the, the bulk of the, all of the elements was the rock at the time because in 2004 my partner opened a club and in brooklyn and he gave me a platform to do practices free to the public he gave me a platform to practice for myself above the restaurant because he opened a restaurant i had a loft and then we opened up seven uh we opened up break life studios and uh but the, the rock, Burns started introducing me all these incredible dancers, and that's when I started restudying rocking in 2004. I started restudying what I never learned when I was a kid. And the way I learned is by hanging out. Just going out, hanging out, going to a party and dancing. We just danced together. I learned so much from dancing with my, my, my brothers and sisters too. We got about six girls in the Seven Gems RDs. So that's my experience, you know, but the, the rock dance division is the biggest component at this moment. And, uh, you know, we're just, whenever we get together, we have fun with hip hop and if, when we document it and, you know, we, we take this very serious. It's not a joke, you know what I'm saying? We have a very serious archive of information since 2004 that we have in our possession that we are working to create, you know, maybe two or three films and uh, we're working on a book project right now based on the culture and tradition of getting down in the 1970s. Hopefully it'll be done in the next few years, but that's seven years at the point. All right, so just for the record, because I started in 1978, you know, I can only speak of that year up. Uh, you, know, it, you know, definitely I would say to this day, until someone changes my mind, hip hop, you know, what became hip hop culture was started and, you know, the elements came together to really be uh, zeroed in to be, uh, become a banner name of hip hop. I trust that. That's the story that I know from people before me. Since 78, when I became a part of this and when uh, my group YCB, we all came together with Frosty Freeze and we became Rocksteady Crew. Um, you know, we, we were connected to a, a performance called uh, 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 Graffiti, uh, was it Graffiti Rock? It might have been uh, called Graffiti Rock at Henry Ch next to Henry Chalfont Studio in New York City, 1981. We did an exhibition with Graffiti, MC, DJ, and Breaking at Common Ground in New York City. And uh, it was a two-day exhibition and it was covered by the Village Voice magazine. So this is the first time that the media came to really start asking questions. What is this that we're watching here? So this article, you can find it, it's called Breaking is Hard to Do. And it's an article by Sally Baines from the Village Voice magazine and the pictures were shot by Martha Cooper. So this is some history that can be found uh, if you search for it. Um, within that experience, you know, we ended up being connected to the village, which is an art, you know, this is the art area of, you know, art from world art you know and it's very ritzy kind of like you know really hip art area and we started performing in a lot of these uh kind of different village clubs that weren't really hip-hop clubs so we were kind of like hanging out with people like keith herring and and all these different interesting artists and what's the other guy there's so many interesting people that we would bump into and and uh with that experience you know uh came the documentary style wars you know, which is the first documentary and then the, the first independent film, Wild Style. So we were the group that was getting these opportunities as B-Boys first. And uh, with those experiences became the tours. So the first tours that happened, uh, you know, were based on, you know, one of the first was the New York City Rap Tour. And it was uh, in collaboration with Europe One, which is a 
and FNAC, which is a like a store chain in Europe, and they sponsored this tour that brought DJs, MCs, writers, and uh, B boys to uh, and Double Dutch Girls to to England and France, you know, and uh, there was a lot of different people from the the scene that we are part of in the village scene. And that was the first time that it went out there, and we stayed there for, what was it, two weeks? I think it was two weeks, it may have been more. It's a long time ago. But uh, we performed in maybe six cities in, Fr in France, and then we crossed to do a performance in the Hippodrome in London. And this is the first time people really caught this whole thing as a culture. So it was like hip-hop culture came to Europe. The Wild Style movie release got signed by, there was an interaction between Japan and, and uh, New York, so somebody worked out this, I don't remember the names of these people, but they worked out this uh, tour to premiere the movie in Tokyo. So then we went with the same type of DJs and most of the people from Wild Style, and this is the first time that Tokyo was, the whole culture came together. I mean, I'm sure that people saw maybe a little bit of breaking somewhere in the world. But it came as a full culture. We brought DJs, MCs, writers, and dancers again. Showed the movie. It was amazing. Went to Yoyogi Park. You know, the media covered it big. And this is when Japan got... Japan had already been exposed to a lot of dance from the United States. But it was the first time that it was like the hip-hop culture came there. So I would say the first two countries that really... It was Europe. It was definitely Europe and, and Japan primarily. And... Uh, and then from there, over the course of time, it was, we picked away at things and, you know, uh, we went to Australia, you know, brought, Rocksteady Crew got, from, when we did a record and when we did Beat Street, we were able to travel again and keep re-exposing it. So those were the main countries that were the first ones to get exposed to uh, the whole culture.